Hey friends, my name is Pat and welcome. Uh, in this video, I'll be walking you through how I overclocked my system back here. A uh, good old torch, that's what I named the system. Now, if you haven't seen my first video, which is a 30 minute build vlog, it's pretty lengthy. Um, give some context, I'm a complete noob when it comes to computers. I don't know what I'm doing. So this is a complete rookie overclocking the system um, and what am I actually overclocking ha huh, well let me tell you I'm overclocking the i7 6700k and also the GTX 1070 from MSI the gaming X edition just a, just a quick aside it's crazy how in the computer industry um, all manufacturers have to do is add gaming or X and it's just that much more extreme and more appealing to gamers. That's kind of ridiculous. MSI GeForce GTX 1070 Gaming X. Deep Cools Captain 240EX. Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 5. So I'm going to walk you through how I overclocked my i7 6700K and how I overclocked my GTX 1070. Then after that, I'll show you what I what programs I use to test for stability and to benchmark the system as well. But before that, let's see what Torch is actually running. Everything is housed in NZXT's S340 case. Uh, and stars of the show, it's the i7 6700K, which is the CPU and the graphics card, which is MSI's GTX 1070 Gaming X Edition. The CPU is being cooled by Deep Cool's Captain 240EX all-in-one cooler. For our RAM, we have two 8-gig sticks of G-Skills Ripjaw 5 running at 3000 speed. For our motherboard, it's a Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 5. For our storage, I just have one. It's a 480 gig SSD from SanDisk. And everything is being powered by EVGA 650 GQ 80 plus gold. I'll list all of these computer parts in the description below. So here I am, I'm in my BIOS. This is gonna look different depending on what motherboard you have. But you can see right here, my base clock is 100 megahertz. My CPU is running at 4.5 gigahertz. My memory is at 3000 speeds, so 3000 megahertz. Um, you can see my CPU temperature is at 40 degrees Celsius and my V core is at 1.32 volts. Now what I did to overclock the CPU is I went to advanced frequency sweat settings and I just essentially only tweaked the multiplier. Which is right here, CPU clock ratio. Now set here at stock at 40. And what I did is just add one every time. So 41, 42, 43, 44, and right now it's at 45. And what this multiplier does, is it takes this number and it multiplies the CPU base clock. So the CPU base clock is set at 100 megahertz. So at stock speeds, 100 megahertz times 40 is 4,000 megahertz or four gigs. So when I have 45 here, 45 times 100 is 4.5 gigahertz. And that's what I did to change the, uh, the clock speed on the CPU. Now as the clock speed increased, I found that I needed to increase the voltage as well. And I went into advanced voltage settings. And then here, CPU core voltage control. And all I did is edit or uh, tweak the CPU V core. It's stock at 1.3 volts. And right now I have it set to 1.35 volts. And I uh, changed it by 0 0.005 each time. So let's say I'm at 4.5 and my system is crashing. I would change the 1.3 to 1.305. See if it all works out. If it doesn't add more, so 1.310 and so forth until I reach system stability. Just to, to note here in advanced memory settings, I can change the speed of my RAM. 
So at stock speeds, the BIOS sets it at 2133, and that's with it disabled. Right now, I have it in profile one to have it at 3000 megahertz. Um, when I was overclocking the CPU, I actually disabled the XMP profile to um, keep everything as simple as possible. To overclock my graphics card, I'm using MSI Afterburner, uh, simply because I have an MSI graphics card. The important thing to make sure is that you have the most up-to-date driver version. And the first thing I did is I went to power limit, made sure it's linked to my temperature limit, and maxed both of these out. The reason why I maxed both of these out was to give my graphics card the most headroom, the most, the greatest amount of headroom possible. In reality, the power limit and a temperature limit, um, the graphics card shouldn't be hitting anywhere close to this max. So this should be fine. And then the things I tweaked are the core clock and the memory clock. I tweaked the core clock at a plus 50 offset increments and then the memory clock at plus 50 or plus 100 increments until they reach uh, stability. Right now I have it at plus 150 offset for the core clock and plus 502 for the memory clock. So this results in a core clock of 2126 megahertz or around two gigahertz and my memory clock is at 4506 megahertz, so around 4.5 gigahertz. What I did as well is I gave it a custom fan curve um, to make sure the temps are under control. So that was how I overclocked my CPU and my graphics card. Now, once I overclocked it, what did I do to test for stability? And then after that, what did I do to benchmark so that I know there are actual performance growths as a result of overclocking? Well, to stress test my CPU, I used a program called ADA64. As you can see in the screen right now, it's just a trial version, but it's a good stress test. I let this test run for about an hour or two or three. Um, if the system doesn't crash, hey, it works. In addition to that, I also ran a Cinebench test. This is a very light load in the CPU, but this is a, whenever I overclocked to a new um, memory clock, I run a Cinebench first because it's really quick. And if the system crashes right away, then I can just tweak it right away. But Cinebench, it's a good benchmarking tool as well for the CPU. Now for the GPU, I ran Heaven Loops. So this is uh, Unigen's Heaven Benchmark. And I would run this for about 20, 30, 40 minutes to heat up the GPU. And then I would run the benchmark test three or four times to get an average of the benchmarks. Now, in addition to this, I also use 3D Mark Firestrike. So this is a good test for the GPU, and then it does a physics test on the CPU, and does a combined test to see how they work together. So with that, after I run all of those four benchmarks slash stress tests, then my system is good to go. Now, another stress test, or another way to make sure your system is stable, is to actually do what you gotta do. Um, so play video games, edit content, do all that stuff. I realized with the max, I, I maxed out my GPU at an offset of plus 200 core clock and a plus 600 memory clock. And it passed all of those tests fine. But when I was playing a very GPU intensive game, I was playing Guild Wars 2, I started to see artifacts in my graphics and eventually my computer crashed. So then I clicked back my GPU a couple notches and then everything was working fine. So. The best stability test is to actually do your workflow and see what happens. Now during the benchmark and the uh, stability testing of all my overclocks, I use a handful of programs to monitor the temperatures and the clocks and the voltage of both my CPU and my GPU. So the first one I'm going to show you is called HW Monitor. Um, it's a very simple one here. Uh, it may be hard to, to tell on the, on the camera right now, but it gives you basic readings of the voltage, temperatures, 
how fast your fans are spinning, um, the different temperatures of the cores of your um, CPU, and some uh, same information for your GPU. I essentially use this as a backup. I have this running in the background and I double check the maxes that happen with all the other maxes of my other program. I also use the MSI Afterburner. Now this is what I use to overclock my GPU, but you can also have different settings to monitor different aspects of your GPU. And if you click this button here, detach, it brings a bigger graph that after 20 or 30 minutes of benchmarking stability testing, you can see the temperature um, in which your GPU maxes out at or stabilizes at. Now the, what I call the bigger brother, the big brother of the HW monitor here, I have a HW info. So when I click that and click run, it brings up all of these different graphs. And this little window right here gives essentially the same info as the other HW program, but it gives a lot more in addition to that. And when you double click on, let's say, core number zero clock, I'm going to double click it, it can bring up a, a, a graph here that tracks the core number zero clock over time. So I have all these other graphs set up. So this, the ones I have set up right now are my CPU temperature and my GPU temperature. So I can cross reference these two with my other programs. Then I have system and temperature five on my left hand side. And these are just measuring the temperatures within my case itself. Um, and then these four on the middle here, the top four are my case fan speeds. Cause I was interested in seeing hopefully that my, uh, my CPU pump was at a constant speed and I wanted to see how my, my radiator fans and my case fans, how they ramped up based on what temperatures that the CPU, GPU and the case is feeling. So it's just more of my curiosity at that point. And then the last program I use primarily for CPU testing is called real temp. So look out here, it's essentially just gives the current temperature and then max temperatures. So I just wanted to see what's the maximum temperature. And this is one is a very clean give of that information. So these are all the programs I use. It's a lot of graphs, um, but I also have these programs running when I play games. So Guild Wars 2, um, Bioshock Infinite, and the new Skyrim, the special edition. I always have these uh, programs running in the background to see which games are CPU or GPU intensive. Um, and to give you some information, my, my GPU um, hits around 70 degrees Celsius max when playing Guild Wars 2. And when playing Skyrim and Bioshock, it's around 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and my fan speed actually ramps up to around 70 to 80% when the graphics card's at 70 degrees Celsius. But even with the fans of the GPU at um, 80%, they're really quiet, so I don't really hear them. So that's not that big of a deal. And my CPU under all of the benchmark tests uh, the temperature maxes out at around 60 degrees Celsius. So the, uh, the AIO cooler by Deepcool, um, great stuff, it's doing its job. And I'm looking right now, it's idle temp is around 30, 31 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, that's all I got for programs. So there we go. I got my i7-6700K overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz with a V-core of 1.332 voltage. My 1070, the graphics card, uh, its core clock went up to 20, 20, 2126 megahertz with a memory clock of 4506 megahertz. Pro tip number one, write everything down. So I wrote every single test that I did, all the different um, iterations of memory clocks, voltage, whatnot, and the corresponding benchmarks associated with each level. That's pro tip number one. Pro tip number two is 
when you increase voltage, your temperatures are going to increase. So make sure that your fans and CPU cooler are up to speed and what you need to do to keep your system from overheating. And then the last thing that I came across during this whole process is the idea of V-droop. Um, it's something that I didn't really know what was going on until I did very extensive research. V-droop is in, it's concerning the, uh, the V-core within the BIOS of your motherboard. So when I said that, that my CPU is running at a 1.332 volts, but in my BIOS, I actually set the V-core to 1.35. So the idea of V-droop is that your motherboard will output a uh, lower voltage so that to make sure it won't exceed the V-core that you set in the BIOS. It's a safety mechanism. But when I was trying to amp up the voltage and when I'm looking at all my programs that I'm monitoring that is monitoring the voltage, and I see that it wasn't adding up. Like I set it to 1.38, but it's only outputting 1.35. I thought something was wrong with my motherboard, but that's normal. V droop, it happens. Now, if you want to offset the V droop, you can tweak your load line calibration system or settings in your BIOS. So LLC. I try to do that in, in my in my motherboard. I have the Gaming Five from Gigabyte. And I, I can't find it, so I don't think that it exists as an option for this motherboard. Now, one last pro tip to all of you beginners who are trying to overclock your system for the first time is that not every CPU and GPUs are made the same. So you can have an i7-6700K, but it may not overclock to the same length as my i7-6700K did. It's basically silicon lottery, who knows? So it's difficult to compare numbers online. Now, but that's also one of the exciting parts about overclocking is I have a unique CPU and a unique GPU and overclocking allows me to figure out the personalities of those components. Okay, so let me know in the comments section what are your thoughts about overclocking, especially if you're a beginner and have never overclocked before. Um, it can be scary. I completely understand. So you may be wondering why even overclock? What's the point? Well, imagine you have a sports car that can go up to 200 miles per hour. But when you got the car, there's a block or a stick preventing your gas pedal from going beyond a certain point. Well, overclocking is essentially just removing that block, that restriction, so that machine can go the full speed I was meant to go. So hey, free performance. And when you overclock, it doesn't have to be a maximum overclock. My numbers for my CPU and my graphics card are, they're a very moderate overclock. It's nothing too intense, but hey, free performance is free performance. So let me know your thoughts down below. Also, if you are a veteran computer builder or a veteran overclocker, and if you see ways or ways that I can improve my overclock, or if you have pro tips for, um, for everyone, pro tips of your own, please let us know in the comments section below. Let's share our knowledge. We're all in one community out here. Let's spread the love. So with that, that's the end of my video. If you enjoyed this watch, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything uh, about my build or overclocking, please let me know, and I'll try my best to answer. With that, that's all I have. Um, thank you so much. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.